Hello everybody, this is Michelle Fox and welcome back to The Simple Quilter. Have you ever made a ragtime quilt? Have you made a lot of ragtime quilts? Now I've made a lot of ragtime quilts. I've probably made anywhere between 14 and 18 ragtime quilts. Uh, I, if you've watched my videos, you know that that's the most popular, that's the most requested uh, quilt from my family members. But today, um, I am going to be talking a little bit about ragtime quilts, but I have these stacks of denim. Now this is just a real small stack. I have big stacks of denim. And I've been wanting to kind of make a denim and flannel quilt. I saw that on Pinterest and I'm like, huh, I haven't made one of those. I've made denim and cotton. I've made flannel quilts, uh, ragtime quilts, but I've never made a denim and a flannel quilt. And so I wanted to just do a little experiment today to see if this is what I really want to do and to check out how wide I want the seams so that I can kind of compare the phrase to see what I like best. So for my uh, little, I've made four little samples here and I'll show you those in a minute. But um, for the quilt that I want to make, I'm going to use, this is all denim that I've cut from old blue jeans. I had a friend who gave me tons and tons of old blue jeans and I cut them up. Now I have a video out that shows how to cut the um, blue jeans up so I'll put a link up above for that. And then I also have a video out about how to make um, a denim picnic quilt and it's the same principle. But you might want to change the seam. If you decide to make one, you might want to change the seam allowance after seeing what's coming up next. Okay, so when I've sewn um, ragtime quilts before, I've always sewn an inch seam allowance. And you can see this one's been washed several times. It's a smaller one. It's a, 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 a wheelchair size quilt but you can see how it frayed and what it looks like now. All right. But I've always been interested to know what it would look like if I made the seam smaller, like three-fourths of an inch, because some people just do three-fourths of an inch and some people do half an inch. So I've done I'm doing this little experiment. So the first thing I did was I sewed four pieces together using the denim and the flannel and I did one inch seam allowance everywhere. And this one does not have any batting in it. And then I trimmed it. Now I trim I always trim it the same. I trim it these are trimmed at either oh, somewhere between three-eighths of an inch and half an inch, and I trim all the way around, okay? Now, I wanted to show you this before I washed it. Okay, so here's the one inch. Then I made another little mini sample without batting using the same fabrics, old denim, and I did three-fourths of an inch. So you can kind of see how it's looking. Now the edges are frayed too, but we really won't see much of that until after it's sewn. And you can see there's a difference. There's a little bit of a difference there. This looks a little fuller than this does. Okay. Then I took it a step further and I did a half of an inch. Now this one hasn't frayed very good, you know, you can't hardly tell anything here. I think we'll see a big difference once it's washed. But I wanted to just kind of show you this little experiment that I'm doing. And I wanted to show you before I've washed and dried them. So you can see it's the same fabric, just old denim, cut up from old blue jeans. And I'm going to wash these and I'm going to see what they look like and I'm going to show you what they look like after they're washed. Okay, now <clears throat> earlier I told you I was wanting to make a denim and flannel quilt. So I've always used batting 
and my ragtime quilts. I like the extra weight that it adds. So I thought, well, the denim's pretty heavy. Now the batty made a little bit heavier, but I don't know if this is going to be heavy enough for like a picnic quilt. So I, I put some batting in it now. These are an inch seams just like these, but I'm going to wash this one too and see how I like it once it's washed. And that's going to help me decide if I want to use batting in it here or not. So these are kind of just little mini quilt samples. I'm going to wash these up and dry them. And then I'm going to show you the outcome. Okay, so let me show you one more time. This is the inch. This is the fourth of an inch seam. No, wait. This is three-fourths of an inch seam. And then this one is half an inch. And we're going to see what it looks like after I've washed and dried them. Okay, so I have washed all of it and dried all of it. I even pressed it just a little bit. And I'm going to show you the outcome. So you can have a better idea of what size of stitch length. Uh, not st so you'll have a so you'll have a better idea of the size of seam you want to use. Okay, so let's start. This is the inch. And I really like this inch. I would have to say there's like a big knot right here where the seams came. And that might not be very comfortable to sit on if you're using this for a picnic quilt. So that could be a little detrimental. But I do like the way it frayed. I like that look. Okay, <clears throat> now here's the three quarters inch, and I like the look of this. This isn't quite so big. That's more manageable, I think, with that there, but I like this one too. I really prefer the one inch other than the big knot that you're going to have right there. Okay, so this is the three quarters inch. And then this is the half inch. Now, you're not going to have a great big knot there, but I really have to say this is my least favorite of the three because I like the fray. I like the look it gives. Now, in the comments below, please be sure to tell me which one that you like best. So let's go over them real quick. Here's the half inch. the three quarters inch and the one inch. I think um, I'm gonna go with a three-fourths inch because of the it's just there's just not such a big knot right there. I think the three quarters inch. And you know, I've always done the one inch, so this little experiment um, proved to be useful. I like, I like the way it turned out. I do like the length of the fray here, but that little bundle right there is going to be quite a chunk to, to lay on. Even if you turn it over like that, you're going to have a pretty big knot right there. Okay, the next thing I want to show you is I wanted to see what the denim would feel like with batting and without so I could decide whether I wanted to put batting in my blue jean quilt or not. And I have to tell you, this right here is light. Now when I get all the pieces together, it's going to be a pretty heavy quilt, but it's thin. To me, it's thin, and for a picnic quilt, I think you need a little bit of cushion. So I'm going to continue to put batting 
in mine. Now it's going to be a really thin batting. It's not going to be a big puffy th uh, batting with polyester in it or real thick cotton. It's going to be a very lightweight batting. And I'm likely just to use scraps for this. So there are the results of my little experiment. Yeah, this was the one inch too, and this has a big, a big knot right there too. I'm definitely going to do the three quarters inch because of these big knots. Anyway, when I'm doing denim, I never noticed that on uh, the flannel quilts that I've made, but since this has denim uh, in it, that's going to make a difference. I have to wonder if it made a difference on my son and daughter's picnic quilt. Now, I didn't use flannel with theirs. I just used a cotton, but I wonder what that felt like when it got washed and how it felt when they used it. I know they've used it several times. I'll have to ask him. Okay. So, before you make a denim ragtime quilt or a ragtime quilt with just flannels, there's a few things that you do want to do. I always use my walking foot. I try to make these without a walking foot and the fabric, the top portion slid forward and moved forward. So I always use a walking foot. Um, I do use Aerofill thread, but I use a 40 weight, which is a thicker thread. So I think you need a thicker thread. You also need to increase your stitch length. My stitch length that I use is over three. And then you want to be sure you use a denim or a jeans needle. Because at times you're throwing through, because at times you are sewing through up to two, four, six, uh, let's see, two, two, four, six, eight. You could be sewing up to eight through eight layers of denim. So, um, no, wait a minute. That would be, yes, you could be sewing up to, through eight layers of denim at the seam. So you definitely want to use a blue jean needle. Now another important tip is, okay, so another important tip, when you wash these for the first time, you have got to use, wash them in a washer that has a um, filter or a screen because there is so much lint that comes off of these, you're likely to clog up your lines. Now, I washed these four pieces in the washer, and I'm not sure that was even a good idea, because let me show you all the lint that comes off of these. And this is just one little piece. And this is after it's been washed and dried once. Look at all that. Now that's going to end up in your washer, in the lines of your washing machine. Um, if it has a filter, it will catch some of that. But you're going to have to check it frequently. And then also, when you dry it, you have to check that filter or the vent several times because it just piles up in your vent and you don't want to catch anything on fire. So you do need to exercise a little caution when washing and drying these. I think this frayed up beautifully. I really like how that that did. So I'll be using the 3 4 inch with a thin batting. So I hope that's giving you some things to think about before you make your first ragtime quilt, especially if you're going to be using denim. I think the same thing will apply if you're going to use um, 
just flannel. I always use a batting with my flannel ragtime quilt and I always do a quarter uh, an inch, a full inch. Now I may switch that to three quarters of an inch because I really like how that frayed up. Uh, that just looks so cool. But as I've said before, I've made a lot of those, but just because you did it one way doesn't mean that way can't be improved upon. Okay, so in the comments below, please be sure not to forget to tell me which length of seam, which width of seam you liked best. Um, I do hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, please share with a friend, and as always, leave a comment. I love to get the comments, and I try to reply to each and every one. So until next time, have fun quilting.